Yo, what's up, everybody? This is your man, Tony Wiggins, here with the Locked On Jaguars show on a Thursday. Urban Meyer, is he saying the right things for the fans and the local media about the quarterback position, or is he just not saying what they want to hear? I got the story right now on today's episode of Locked On Jaguars. The Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Jags, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Oh, yeah, man. We're here live on a Thursday from the Wiggins studio here in the lovely Riverside part of Jacksonville. I am your man, Tony Wiggins here with the locked on Jaguars podcast here, wherever you get it, man, we hear every day. This is your team every day. And I'm glad to be here. I'm going to talk urban Meyer today, as I said, and we're going to talk quarterbacks. We're going to talk Trevor Lawrence. We're going to talk Gardner Minshew. We're even going to talk your expectations and whether or not you're a little bit upset that they haven't been met. Let's just get right to it. People have been wondering, when is he going to name a starter? You know, all of this talk, let's go back. Let's just set the template a little bit. In the offseason, the Jaguars secured the number one pick. We know that. Urban Meyer took the job, and primarily one of the reasons was because of the chance to draft Trevor Lawrence. Shot Khan even had a press conference and talked about the ability to finally obtain a franchise quarterback, right? There's all this talk that he's a generational talent in Trevor Lawrence. It's Trevor Town, Trevor this, Trevor that, Trevor this, Trevor that. All of this stuff, special workouts before the workout. All of these things that kind of got the fans all riled up. Right? Right. Then they come into camp, and all of a sudden, Gardner Minshew's playing well, Trevor Lawrence is playing well. Both. I'm going to tell you right now, Trevor has not done anything to disappoint anyone who's seen him play. Not at all. Gardner, on the other hand, has actually done some nice things. I'm going to tell you the difference between the two guys, and I'm going to tell you why fans are so upset that Urban won't just flat out name Trevor Lawrence the quarterback, okay? The difference between the two in practice is this. You see way more upside with Trevor Lawrence. You also see the propensity to take more chances because of that trust and that upside that Trevor Lawrence has in his ability. With Gardner Minshew, he plays it safe. Now, the safe that he plays it now is better than the safe that you used to see because the safe that you used to see wasn't a structure. Gardner Minshew played a lot off schedule, did a lot of things that he felt like he needed to do because the offense was in, in my opinion, a little bit of a disarray. But now there's more stuff around him. It's a better fit. There's, there's, there's better offense around him. There's better players. There's more structure. And he's looked decent. He ain't Trevor Lawrence. And the fans know it and the media people that watch practice. They also know it. So the question is, why? Why are we still sitting here talking about this? And why haven't you named the starter to be Trevor Lawrence, Urban Meyer? Well, let me tell you something. There could be some motivations for it. One, there could be just the simple fact that you want to send the message to your team that everybody has to earn everything. Okay. The other thing is Urban could simply just be uh, fulfilling a promise to Gardner that he's going to give him a shot. That also gives you credibility with the rest of your team. He also could be trying to boost the tradeability of Gardner Minshew organically, not making it up. The kid's playing well. He's playing well, right? But you're organically trying to uh, simultaneously give Gardner a chance, make Trevor earn it, as well as it doesn't hurt that if you say that Gardner's playing well, that somebody else who has a quarterback situation or an injury situation will look and go, hmm, we'll give you a second round pick for Gardner Minshew or maybe a third round pick. I get it. The Jacksonville fans and media people, they don't want to hear that stuff. One of the reasons is because you teach people how to treat you. And one of the things that the front office did at Urban, you pretty much told people the reason you took this job was because of, the, of Trevor Lawrence. You big up Trevor Lawrence and talked about Trevor Lawrence. When you're a, a generational talent, and with all due respect to Patrick Mahomes, who is that, he wasn't drafted to be that. He was drafted 
as a crapshoot because, first of all, he went later than number one. Uh, teams that needed quarterbacks passed up on it. No one was passing up on Trevor Lawrence. When you talk about guys like Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck, you draft them and give them the ball. And that's what people expect out of Urban Meyer and the Jacksonville Jaguars. They don't want to play around with this man. They've suffered long enough. Let's just get it going. If he makes a mistake, he makes mistakes. Urban, however, I think some of him believes that this team is good enough to win some games. And even if it means playing it safe and winning games early without rookie mistakes, that they don't have to suffer through rookie mistakes that cost them games and cost losing to happen, that they can do both. They can win and bring Trevor along at the right pace. So this might be more about Trevor Lawrence just not being ruined early and being developed properly than it is about him not separating himself from Gardner Minshew. Still, ain't nobody trying to hear that. That's the bottom line. Uh, when, you, when you've been Jacksonville and you've been a team that hasn't won very much in the fan bases, the fan base is starving. I mean, like starving, starving for something good and something positive. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. We waiting. These fans would, would, would gladly – uh, go sub 500 as long as it looks like that they're aiming towards something for the future. They don't believe that that kid can learn anything with a baseball cap on and holding a clipboard. And I happen to agree. Now I've seen practice. The talent is, is there, there's a, there's a huge difference. There's a huge gap. And the bottom line is usually talent wins out. What we're going to do, man, we're going to talk about it. A little bit more. We're going to talk about uh, we mentioned yesterday on yesterday's podcast why I did not think it was a good idea that Gardner Minshew be traded, uh, because if he's going to be a real good backup, he can be a real good backup for you. So uh, I don't think Gardner Minshew uh, needs to be traded or needs to be moved on uh, to another team. I just think it's cool to give him a fair shot, put the other kid in and uh, still have him invested and be a part of the Jacksonville Jaguars. More about this in just a second, but I'm going to get into why the fans just don't understand and why you could see as much as they've liked everything that everyone has done in the offseason, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you examples of why you would see an all-out revolt if Trevor Lawrence does not run out there against the Houston Texans on opening Sunday and open the weekend of the National Football League. I'll do that in just a second here on Locked On Jaguars after I tell you about rockauto.com. This episode is brought to you by rockauto.com and with the ever increasing numbers of makes and models of vehicles and woo, there's a lot of them out there. It's not possible for your local chain parts store to stock all of the parts you need. That's why sometimes when you go in there, you end up standing in there for hours at a time while they pretend they're looking for it in the back they're not the dude just drove off to go get it from somewhere else well you don't have to deal with that save time and money when using rockauto.com there's no need for you to spend 30 50 or even 100 percent more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership when you can go to rockauto.com which is a family-owned business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years the prices are reliably low for every customer they have everything you need from brake parts to tail lamps motor oil and even new carpet go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in there how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you it's rockauto.com and locked on man that's what we do you can be a part of the family too at rockauto.com all right moving along here we're going to continue on talking about this quarterback situation look man the bottom line is is a lot, a big part of what has happened in this offseason, a huge part of it is the it was the addition of Urban Meyer because he's a winner, right? It was the commitment of the owner, Shai Khan, to do something different, to do something out of the box, to really uh, galvanize the fan base and the franchise that really showed a real a serious commitment to winning, not just a commitment to the city and having a football team here, but a commitment to putting a product on the field that would be more representative of the city than the, the, the product that you've mostly seen over the last, the course of the last seven or eight years, right? For the most part. And, for, and they've done all of that, but make no mistake about it. The number one part of all of this stuff has been Trevor Lawrence. I mean, 
the guy, if you're local, if you're not local here, you don't really get it and understand in Jacksonville that one of the things that's happened here, there have been podcasts dedicated to him, right? Every single thing about Jacksonville and about sports has been Trevor this and Trevor that, and rightfully so. This is why you sometimes have to be careful. I was at practice, and there were people that I know and the people that I trust that were saying, get Minshew out of here. I'm ready for him to go. Those are the same people that two years ago that bought into the whole Uncle Rico persona of Gardner Minshew. It is really what have you done for me lately. It's like we'll love you until we get somebody better looking to love. And that's the dangerous part of sports. And I don't think that's going to happen with Trevor Lawrence. And I know this is a sort of an outlier situation where you get a guy who is a generational talent, a guy who's been the number one player at his position since he was in the ninth grade with the golden locks and goes to Clemson and wins a national championship as a freshman. I know it's all different. And I know Minshew's a first round pick, but it's almost as if it appears sometimes that because you're so desperate, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking. For, you ever seen a desperate guy who, who can't get a date and he, he, he just he looks the part of a desperate dude and that becomes the reason why he can't get a date, right? So the Jaguar fans are always looking for something to be happy about and it's always been so short-lived because they invest too much in trying to find football joy. When they finally do get something, they want it right now. Urban Meyer might be making the best decision long term for Trevor Lawrence and his future as to not get him dinged up or to rush him into a situation where he makes mistakes or to get him into a situation where he's not uh, he's not winning games because of those mistakes. Whereas another guy in Minshew, while he won't be as high risk, will be safe and not turn the ball over, even though you won't get the, the, the highest reward for the risk that you take, what it is, he won't lose games for you. He'll be safe. The problem with that is Urban Meyer has never struck me or anyone else as a guy who's willing to play it safe just to win. You always, Urban Meyer has already struck a lot of people around here as the dude that's willing to put the most talented players on the field and if they make mistakes, they make mistakes. I mean, he played Tim Tebow as a freshman at Florida when he had the, uh, a guy who and Chris Leak who, was, who ended up the all-time leading uh, passer at the University of Florida, right? But also remember this. He decided to, to play uh, R.J. Barrett over the kid that actually came into the game when Barrett got hurt with the bigger arm who won a national championship for that team. Also remember this. He chose Dwayne Haskins over Joe Burrow at Ohio State. So sometimes he'll choose the safer option over the more risky option if it means a short-term winning situation. There were some rumors, and I don't know how true it is, that he also kind of chose John Brantley over Cam Newton and allowed Cam Newton to transfer. And folks say, well, no, Cam Newton got in trouble. Cam Newton was accused of stealing a laptop. Urban had people on his team that choked folks and were members of gangs. So don't tell me he kicked that kid out of school just because he chose a laptop. Maybe he chose the guy who was the safer option for him at the time, and it turns out he was wrong. But getting back to Jacksonville, fans here don't want to hear it. All of these people bought in because of Trevor. They want it, and they want it now. Is that the right thing to do? Is it fair that Urban Meyer uh, – would do that and go ahead and uh, just pass by Gardner Minshew? Or is this all just coach speak? Is Does Urban really know who's going to start and he's just saying this just to say it? But then nobody understands what's the motivation of that either. Why? Why would you do it? Why would you take the chance and not play and, and, and act as if – see. This is the thing. He's being careful with this, but then you go sign Tim Tebow and put him on the team he hadn't played football for eight years. So folks are just confused. It's like, are you a gambler? Are you a risk taker? Do you go with gut feeling? Or are you just a guy who's going to situationally decide when you're going to be careful about stuff and when you aren't? Or is just, just it, it, and Trevor's not the guy that 
he doesn't strike me as the type of individual that needs to be motivated by you not giving him the keys to the the the, the car. He seems like the guy that we like. Give me the keys. He doesn't seem like the dude that you have to do this for or do this to to sort of humble him. He's already humble. He so there's just a lot of confusion as to why Urban Meyer is doing this. I'm going to try to get it figured out, man. We're going to try to get it figured out together. In segment number three here on Locked on Jaguars. I'm going to tell you about Bet Online, though, man. Bet Online is where you need to go to get paid when you're trying to wager on these games. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season is really in full swing, and you can track all the action at Bet Online. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for sporting needs. Like right now, there was a big boxing match coming up. One of the guys had to pull out. There's going to be a substitute. Maybe if that guy is the dude, you can catch a little bit of something. I'm talking about you guys against Pacquiao. You have to read up on Bet Online before the next pitch or first bell. Go to your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news. Sign up bonuses and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their run to the playoffs and as guys prep for their walk to the ring. Head to the website on your device and get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use the promo code Locked On, And that's because Bet Online is your online sportsbook experts. That promo code is locked on. Make sure you take advantage today and put your mind and money together so you can get paid. And we're going to move right along here on a Thursday, talking about this quarterback situation here in Jacksonville. Man, I'm telling you, it almost got me in tears because it's just been so much. It's been this barbecue, man. Ever since, like, I would say January, once they knew that they were getting uh, Trevor Lawrence, and then you started hearing rumblings about Urban Meyer, it's just been on fire around here in Jacksonville. And now the fans are like, are you kidding me? Name this guy a starter, man. Are you going to really tell us that we're traveling? There's a group of fans here that are traveling to Houston. I mean, it's it's probably a, over a thousand of those guys going to Houston for an entire weekend. You think they're going to Houston to see Gardner Minshew? Are you kidding me? And basically what Urban Meyer said at his press conference is that it's an open competition that it's an open competition. And I, I mean, I don't know what that really means. Uh, if Gardner Minshew beats him out and plays extremely well, when does Trevor ever play? And then isn't that a di direct reflection on you uh, that you thought you needed to use the number one overall pick on a guy, but you got a guy on your roster that actually beats him out? And God, let me tell you something about Gardner Minshew. If you've built this team the way you think you have with all, you know, you signed all of these players and then they drafted all of these other guys. If you've built this team and you're about winning, if Gardner gets the job and they start winning, what are you going to do to relinquish him of his duties? What are you going to do to trade him? Does it actually make his value go up around the league to other teams? I don't know if that's necessarily true. Maybe it's just you have the magic formula. Maybe people who, by this time in Gardner's career, he's getting close to almost playing against everybody or at least having a shot. I would say 15 teams aren't even in the market for a quarterback in the next year or two. So you cut that in half, that's half the league. So out of the other half, who's willing to give you anything for him when they know you have Trevor Lawrence behind him? And at some point, Gardner's rookie contract is going to run out. Whoever is going to sign him is going to have to pay him. Somebody's going to be in a Kirk Cousins situation again where you're going to have to overpay for a dude that ain't as good as the money you give him. And then your organization is going to be stuck. So I'm just really, really trying to figure out what gives here. Trevor's your guy. Go for it. Trust me, the fans do not care if you don't win these games right now. The fans would rather go 6-11 and 11 with Trevor playing and learning from his, from his mistakes than go 9-8 and eight with Gardner Minshew as your quarterback. They would. Now, you don't necessarily do all of these things uh, based on what fans want, but you just got to be careful when 
if the entire offseason you guys have sold this as Trevor. Yeah, you did. You have. And sometimes some of the people in the media, they they did it, they did it to themselves. They bought, they bought into it and they they went overboard with the Trevor stuff. But you have to understand where they came from and why they did it that way. You have to understand where the fans came from and why they did it that way. And if he and if Urban Meyer feels that he needs to slow walk this for some for some reason, then I get it. But at some point he's gonna have to explain because when people are on the practice field, they think they see a quarterback that's better than the guy that you say he's in competition with. Then tell us he's not doing uh, things he needs to do on the board. Tell us you're afraid of the offensive line. Tell us he needs to stop taking chances. At some point, and here's what Urban's going to have to learn that's different from college, people are going to demand an answer as to why he's not starting, especially when the reports from practice is that he's playing better than the other guy and that he, he has way more talent and he can do more things than the other guy can do. Or maybe this is all for nothing. Maybe this is just coach speak. Maybe this is just urban slow playing it. I don't know what it is, but I know today, right now, there's a lot of people in the media and a lot of people, a lot of fans that are scratching their head, wondering why uh, they had to turn the temperature down on their grill today because their barbecue. Uh, they, I think they feel like somebody told them they're cooking their meat too fast. That's what I think. All right, man, it's Thursday, so remember – you can go uh, and check out the Peacock and Williamson podcast. Also, if you're going to make those bets, man, on Bet Online, Bet Online sponsors the Locked On Bets podcast with your boy Q and Lee Sterling. You, you better get that information from them because all of this stuff I'm telling y'all about, they're going to have it. They're going to have who's going to start, who's not going to start, all the analytics, all of the uh, bad plays and good plays that allow you to have the information that you need to get paid. And that podcast, you can subscribe to that on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. I want you to do what I always tell you to do, man. It's locked on Jaguars. Take care of each other. We'll see you guys tomorrow here on YouTube and everywhere else. For Tony Wiggins, thank you for joining me here on Locked on Jaguars. Until another episode, I'll holler at you, baby. <laughs>